Let's go around the world, around the world with Rebecca. That's me. Come around the world, around the world with her. Let's go around the world, around the world with Rebecca. And we can see how alike and different we are. When we travel <laughs> with her to places near and far. Let's go around the world. Around the world with Rebecca. And it's done. Let's go around. No, it's good. Yeah. Now, my friends, hello and welcome to Around the World with Miss Rebecca. My name is Miss Rebecca with the Jailer North Hills Library. And that is Miss Ingrid behind the camera and our uh, producer and music person. Dude, this is becoming one of my, this is becoming my favorite show except for book babies and art and Storytime Express. That's not how favorite works. I know, but oh, I don't know. I love them all. I can't pick. You're just wildly enthusiastic. I am. Someone needs to be. <laughs> well, my friends, today we will be journeying to Pakistan. Around the world. First, let's review where we, yeah. where we are and where we've been. We are here. Yep. We have been to Ireland. Yep. We have been to Iraq. Yep. And last week, we went to Nigeria. Yep. So we've been there. Well, we are here. Yeah. Boop, boop. Boop. And we almost went to Iceland because I made a mistake and I thought you wanted to go to Iceland instead of Ireland. So I have that all set up and ready to go if you ever do want to go to Iceland. Well, <laughs> they make a book about Iceland Yeah. in this particular series. But yeah. just in case you want to know, yeah. if you're like, what's Iceland? Iceland's right here. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Hmm. So today we're going to Pakistan. And now I'm going to zoom in. So remember, friends, Miss Rebecca, and you all, many of you, are in Pittsburgh. Then we went to Iraq with Miss Rebecca. Then we went to we went to Ireland first. No, we went to Iraq first. No, we went to Ireland. No, we went to Iraq okay. first. Iraq first. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. Iraq was first. That's why there's two of us. That's okay. Yeah, exactly. And then... And then the trip that never happened to Iceland, because that was my fault. We went to Ireland. And then last week we went to Nigeria. And now, Pakistan. How are we going to get there? Well, here we are. Nice. We finger traveled. Nice. The cheapest way to go. <laughs> My friends, now I and I think it's fun to go all around the world because here we are. Yep. You know, a lot of us are in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. Um, some of us are in Ohio. Yep. Um, or we're just wherever we are. Um, but what is nice to see and to know and to be aware of <clears throat> is it isn't just us. No. It is not just us here. No. There are humans just like us all over the world. Yep. And so it's so cool just getting like a teeny tiny little glimpse of what other places look like because we are not the only place. Nope. You know, just like we are not the only people. I am not the only person. You are not the only person. There's all the people. And it's In the just... big, flat world. Miss Ingrid. <laughs> it's not flat. It's round. But we don't have a globe with us today. Sorry. No misinformation in no. around the world. I don't know. 
Okay, my friends, All let's right. get on with business and head to <laughs> Pakistan. Pakistan. I don't know why I do that. Oh, I think it's fine. Pakistan by Rachel Ann Cantor. From the series, The Countries from Which We Come. As always, we have a table of contents. This is a nonfiction book. We have two books today. Both are nonfiction. That means they're true. They're about real things. This is Pakistan. It is historic. It is friendly. And it is wonderful. Pakistan is a country in Asia. About 200 million people live there. See, there's Pakistan. Pakistan and India disagree over who owns the area called Kashmir and Jammu. See, here's Pakistan. Okay. And India is their, one of their neighbors. Okay. Does it have those two places on there? Jammu, on where? On the map. Yeah. Maybe because there's some know. discussions about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Pakistan, a neighbor India. Afghanistan's another neighbor. Tajikistan is another neighbor. And do they touch the border of China? It looks like they may. Right. Yeah. So they have many neighbors. Right. Oh, there's a little area. Maybe, maybe my marker. Oh, it's okay. Right up in here because here. Oh yeah, look at that. See, there's the little area that they're, you know, not if, in agreement on. If you could just keep your marker there, then there would be peace. Because <laughs> that would be eliminated. That we don't mean to make light of the situation. No, we don't. The capital of Pakistan is Islamabad. The largest city is Karachi. Karachi is home to more than 23 million people. Some parts of Pakistan are very cold. Snow falls in the mountains. The world's second tallest mountain called K2 is in Pakistan. It's 28,251 feet tall. That's really tall. Other areas, such as deserts, are hot. Interesting animals live in Pakistan. Tall camels walk across the sandy deserts. Leopard geckos crawl over rocks. Markors climb mountains. The markor is a type of wild goat with thick curly horns. I know that this is nonfiction, but he looks a little bit fiction. Just you wait. In ancient times, the Indus people lived in Pakistan. They built some of the world's first cities. Today, people can visit the city's ruins. The Indus created art and metal tools. Many of these objects are more than 4,000 years old. In the 1800s, guess who came? Great Britain. They came and took control of much of Southern Asia. The people of Pakistan wanted their freedom. In 1947, Pakistan became an independent country. Pakistanis celebrate their freedom on August 14th, like how we celebrate on July 4th. Dozens of languages are spoken in Pakistan. Many people speak Urda. This is how you say thank you in Urda. Shukriya. Shukriya. Many Pakistanis speak more than one language. Lots of people know English and Punjabi. Religion is important in Pakistan. Most people are Muslim. They pray in beautiful mosques. One Muslim holiday is Id al-Fitr. Family members exchange gifts and eat tasty meals together. Pakistanis make many delicious foods. Mm. Biryani is a spicy rice dish. Chicken, lamb, and vegetables are often added to the rice. That looks good. Dude. Many meals include a flat bread called roti. That does look really, really yeah, good. Yeah, it looks really good. Some Pakistanis work on farms. 
Other people work in factories. They make clothing and other products. Many workers sell the latest technology, such as cell phones. A popular sport in Pakistan is cricket. Mm. Players hit a ball with a long, flat bat. The game is similar to baseball. Pakistani's national sport is field hockey. In Pakistan, trucks and buses can be beautiful art. Artists paint colorful designs on the trucks. Some artists glue small mirrors to the trucks. The mirrors reflect sunlight to make the art look brighter. That's a good idea. Fast facts. The capital city of Pakistan is Islamabad. Population of Pakistan, about 200 million people. Main languages are Urdu, English, and Punjabi. Money is the Pakistani rupee. Rupee or rupee? rupee? I don't know. Rupee, maybe. Major religion is Islam. Neighboring countries, India, sweet, yeah. saw India, Afghanistan, mm-hmm. Iran, and China. Nice. Because they all touch the borders. Now, a cool fact. Malala Yousafzai is a Pakistani who works to make sure all girls can go to school. Malala won an award called the Nobel Peace Prize in 2014 when she was just 17 years old. Now, we have some words. Ancient means very old. Capital, we've had this one before, is a city where a country's government is based. Independent is free from control by others. Mosques, buildings used by Muslims for worship. Ruins, what is left of something that has decayed or been destroyed. And technology, machinery and equipment developed with scientific knowledge. Very cool. The end. So, my friends, we just saw a little teeny weeny piece of Pakistan, and we learned about some things they like to eat and sports they play and some cool animals. Foreshadowing. Markors. Nice. This animal looked so, so interesting. I thought we need to travel into the book of the Markors to find out more about them. Look. Look at its hat. Is that a hat, Miss Ingrid? It's not a hat, but I wouldn't mind having a hat that looked like that. Maybe Google. And people might say, hey, I like your Marcours hat. (laughs) Maybe they would. Yeah. yeah. My friends, Weird and Wonderful Animals, Marcours by Emma Basir. And nonfiction, so we've got a table of contents. Now, my friends, just wait. Chapter one, wild mountain goats. A markhor walks along the side of a mountain. Its hooves click when it moves across the rocks. The animal's brown fur blends in with the surrounding landscape. Enormous horns curl up out of the markhor's head. It puts its head down to graze. Markhors are most active after sunrise and before sunset. Do you want to try to watch a little video? Let's try. Wait, hold on. Something happened. When the... Dude, we just had such a weird thing. Say it. Say the words. And we're back. Okay, on a QR code, when you see QR codes, it used to be that they were really hard and you had to have like a QR code reader and blah, 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 blah. But now it's so easy they can interrupt your filming when you're doing a very important show. Because if you just hold up your device to that code, it can go there and that's what this did so my friends we are back though and my hand is covering the qr code yep. whoop, whoop, mm-hmm. which you're super special grown up or maybe even you now because yeah. you know yeah you, you have know about those devices things. so yeah. i have another ipad here that i'm going to and if you don't know how a qr code works you just get your device go to your camera this is i know how I know how to do it. If there's another way, this you know. is the this is the most efficient way. So here's what I'm gonna do. See, I have my camera out, yeah, and I'm gonna put the QR code down here, like I'm taking a picture of it. Once it gets in there, a website code pops up, and I just tap it. 
Bloop. So it's finding it? It's finding it. <gasps> and there it is. Okay, now there's a little bit of a glare, but... Well, I can I... move it. Okay, wait, wait. You hold your still, because I think... Okay, yeah, go ahead. Look, it's using Dude, this... that is so not real. It's so real. It's so cute. I don't know if cute's the right word. It's like it's posing. It's just going on about its business. Do you think so, or do you think it knows it's being filmed? Well, I don't think it knows what film is. I don't know, dude. So, my friends, that is just, you know, a little glimpse into a, a little bit of daily life of a video of a Marcor. And also, you know, these books just certainly don't sponsor us. But it's kind of cool that they have those codes in there. Yeah. Because, you know... They have other animals, too. That was pretty cool. Look at all those oh, blowfish. Other things I can't pronounce. Axetol. Axetol. Eye eyes. Naked mole rats, which I didn't really realize Narwhals. Was real. Japanese spider crabs. Wow. Okay, let's get on okay. with Mark Wars. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Markors are wild mountain goats. They are mammals. Markors live in mountainous areas of southern Asia. Most Markors are in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Did you know Markors were likely named for the shape of their horns? In the Pashto language, Mar means snake and Akor means horn. <laughs> There's their range map. So this is where they live. That's so cool. That is pretty neat. Mark horse climbs steep cliffs. Their habitat is way up high. The elevation ranges from 2,000 to 11,800 feet. Some types of trees grow at this height. Oak and pine trees are pretty common. Chapter 2. Corkscrew horns. A mark horse body is up to six feet long. Males weigh approximately 175 to 240 pounds. Females weigh up to 110 pounds. The animal shaggy fur is usually tan, brown, or black. See, you could watch another video that way. Ooh. That's a good shot. So this is a different markor in each one of these pictures. It's not like he they just asked him to pose for this one. I don't know. Like he's not an actor. I really don't know. Okay. He could be. A mar He's not because a markor is not an actor. A markor's horns twist out and up from the top of its head. A male's horns can grow up to five and a quarter feet long. That's Dude, tall, that's, that's taller tall than I am. Me. That's taller than you. Five foot. Five point two five. You're not over I'm five, five four. point two five. No, you're not. I am. <laughs> you're not. You're not taller than me. How tall are you? I'm five one. No way. Yes. You're not five four. Who told you that? Miss Jill. I don't think you're five four. Hmm. <laughs> oh, well. A mark horse horns are taller than us, Miss Ingrid. Okay. Females' horns are much smaller. They are usually only nine inches long. Did you That's know? quite the difference. <laughs> it is quite the difference. Did you know for some animals, antlers fall off and regrow each year, but a mark horse horns grow for the animal's whole life? That's interesting. Do they know whether the female markors, the reason why theirs are shorter is because they they have a tendency to like go to grooming studios and things and they get like pedicures or hornicures? I mean, is that why? Because, I mean, there are guys that do pedicures and manicures, but mostly it's women. Okay. Mark whores have excellent eyesight. Their teeth are large and mostly flat. They also have beards. Males' beards are longer and thicker than females' beards. Markors have cloven hooves. Ooh. Hooves are large, 
thick toes. Like most hoofed mammals, markhors have large bodies and slim legs. Their legs are long and strong. Life cycle of a markhor. A female gives birth in shallow holes in the ground. A baby markhor is called a kid. Mothers have one or two kids at a time. Kids can walk soon after they are born. They travel with their mother. They rely on her for milk for up to six months. Mothers protect their young. Once the kids learn to eat and fend for themselves, they can live on their own. Markors live up to 13 years in the wild. Living on the mountains. Steep, slickery, slippery rocks would cause most animals to fall. But Marcourse's hooves give them secure holds. The hooves slide into cracks. As a result, Marcours can walk on slippery or thin edges. Their long legs help them run fast. Their fur keeps them warm in cold weather. Did you know Marcours have thicker fur during the cold winter months? In the summer, their fur becomes thinner. Just like my pug. Mark whores eat for 12 to 14 hours a day. Wow. They graze in the morning and afternoon. They mostly eat grass in the fall and winter. They'll also eat leaves and twigs. Mark whores grind food with their large, fat teeth, flat teeth, chewing cud. Here's something you may not know. Mark whores chew cud between meals. Cud is partly digested food. Markors bring the cud back up from their stomachs. They grind it with their teeth. Then they swallow it again. This process makes it easier for markors to digest their food. Other animals that chew cud include cows, camels, and giraffes. Do goats do that too? I don't know. I feel like rabbits do that. Yeah. But I don't know. Females live in herds of eight or nine goats. Males live alone for most of the year. Chapter 4, Surviving Threats. Markors use their strong eyesight to spot danger. They look in all directions. Being high up gives them a good view of the surrounding area. Snow leopards are their main predators. Panthers and wolves attack them too. Markors, they face several threats. People hunt them for their horns. Their habitat is also harmed by people cutting down trees. In addition, many markors live in countries where war is common. Wars make it harder for people to protect these animals. Did you know the noise a goat makes is called a bleat? Oh, wait, is a markor a kind of goat? Did I miss that at the beginning? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay, so it, so when I asked about... My the, old mountain goat. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I Because I was like, is it a goat? Okay. Many people are working to save markors. They are trying to stop illegal hunting. They are also protecting the animal's habitat. Saving markors also helps snow leopards. Why do you think that is? The goats are a main food source for snow leopards. Did you know markors are the national animal of Pakistan? That, my friend, is a snow leopard. Okay, let's go over some of the glossary, the words we learned. Okay. Cloven, like a markors hooves, means split in two parts. Digest, to eat food and turn it into energy for the body. Elevation, a measurement of how high a place is above sea level. Graze to eat grass or other plants in a field. Habitat, the area where an animal normally lives. Mammal, a type of animal that has hair or fur and feeds milk to its young. Predator, an animal that hunts other animals for food. My that friend, was so neat. That was the markhor. Mm. And that was Pakistan. So that was Pakistan. so cool. I thought it was pretty neat. And yeah, we got I the video the and everything. Cool. You know what we just did? What? We went around the world. Around the world with Rebecca. It's true. We went around the world. Around the world with her.
car and we went to Pakistan where we met a Marco <laughs> and we learned about how alike and different we are. It's true. Come around the world, around the world with Rebecca. Next week, we'll visit Peru. Woo, Peru! Oh, that's nice. Well, my friends, thanks so much for spending your precious moments with us. And we hope you're having a nice, peaceful day and you just have a peaceful existence. And we'll see you all next time. Bye! Bye.